Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for all things money. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Travis Watts on the line. He's a full-time passive investor, and he's also Director of Investor Relations over at Ashcroft Capital. Travis, welcome to the show. Hey, Adam. Thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Oh, man. So I'm excited to have you on the show today, Travis. I want to get into the today's topic, so benefits of passive investing and uh, your experience with it. But before we get into that, uh, I do want to get a little bit further into what you do over at uh, Ashcroft Capital. So first, just tell us a little bit more about the firm, please. Sure, yeah. Ashcroft Capital is a multifamily syndication firm, uh, New York City-based. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, value-add syndication projects out in Texas and Florida. So what we do is we partner up with accredited investors, uh, high net worth or high income individuals to basically participate in uh, what's commonly five-year hold projects where we're rehabbing uh, apartment communities and we're sharing in the, the cash flow and the equity upside. Uh, the benefits to a limited partner like myself, being that I'm a full-time uh, passive investor, is that it's uh, just simply an approach to investing in real estate that doesn't require any of your time commitment. You're not having to actually manage tenants or go out there and repair properties or, you know, drive the neighborhoods looking for your next deal. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a big deal. The passive, uh, I, I love the, the thought process of investing passively. And I think that's a great, uh, a great transition into today's topic. So passive investing, I know you're a full-time passive investor. I mean, tell us a little bit more about, about what that means and, and how some of the listeners right now that are considering it should be viewing it. Sure. Yeah. Happy to. I, I actually got started in 2009 in the way that probably a lot of people get started with real estate investing, which was single family homes. So my first uh, home purchase, it was actually a condo. It was a two bed, one bath out in Colorado. Um, again, 2009 with some compressed pricing. And, uh, you know, that was just my, at the time with what education I had, what resources I had, that just felt like the, the only approach out there that I could do later to learn around 2015, 2016, uh, there's such thing as uh, passive investing and, and leveraging other people's networks and expertise so that I could be more hands-off. So uh, I'll just kind of recap the story real quickly. It's, it's kind of interesting. I, <laughs> I dove in headfirst wanting to get involved with real estate. I did a multitude of active strategies in single families. So I did fix and flips, house hacking, vacation rentals. I had some buy and holds. And then I would, I would, uh, you know, rehab. Oh, that's awesome! You were, you were scrappy. You were doing it all, getting in the game. I love, you. I love this, Travis. This is good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it seemed all good, and, and it was certainly fun <laughs> at times. But uh, you know, I got in over my head. That's what happened. I, I had a yeah. full time job at the time. I was a W two employee in the oil industry, and it was like hundred hour work weeks away from home. It was an insane amount of commitment. Wow. Time. <laughs> and so you can imagine what that's like to start trying to scale a single family portfolio as you get to four and five and six homes. All of a sudden you realize, wait a second, did I just build myself a job or <laughs> is this uh, an investing strategy, you know, that's, uh, that's scalable. So, uh, so yeah, 2015 and 2016, I transitioned over to uh, being full-time passive in other people's opportunities. So I could focus on what I wanted to focus on with my time is really what happened. Man, I love this. And it's funny that you say that because there's a lot of people listening that are like, I, I, what I love about this is, you know, I knew where you were going with the stories the first time we ever talked, but I was like, wait a minute, he had a job too, and he was doing all these, and he was house hack, and he was, like, it's just too much, like, especially, <laughs> so, so when people are thinking about whether they should go the syndication route or whether they should do it themselves, the first thing I ask them is, well, what, what does your time look like? Like, it's a full-time job to manage a, a real estate portfolio. It's not by accident that these syndicated, like, how difficult it is and how many, and what the staff that it takes a syndication firm to 
to accomplish closing deals and managing properties if they're doing the management themselves. It depends on the model, right? But to do all these different things, I'm like, so you think that you're going to be able to go out there with you and your laptop and you're working part-time and you're going to go compete with firms that have staff hired full-time to do these things? Like, how does that even make sense? Exactly. It takes a lot of, of self-reflection and you know, a lot of honesty to yourself on, you know, uh, are are you really a, a key player in the space? I mean, do you really have the network, the resources, the, the ability? Kind of funny, I was literally, my first fix and flip I was doing, I didn't even own a power drill. And I'm out there, like, trying to make it happen. And, <laughs> you know, it just it took enough, you know, uh, letting go of ego to say, you know what, like other people are doing this a lot better than I am. Maybe I should just leverage their expertise. Man, that's exciting. So um, let's let's talk a little bit more about um, about Ashcroft Capital. So what are the types of deals and or um, that that you typically like um, that you typically like doing? So is it all multifamily? Or is there specific geographies? I mean, give us a little bit more meat because there's a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executives listening. Some of them are 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 looking at opportunities or for opportunities. Others are kind of in that stage that you were at once upon a time where they're like, man, I have this whole portfolio and I don't know if this is what I should be doing. <laughs> and they haven't really considered the yeah. syndication route. Yeah, that's a great point. So when I got started with syndications, I realized that I love real estate and, and all the elements that come with it, the tax advantages and the leverage and everything. So I, I kind of wrote down on paper what would be important to me as an investor if I'm going to be doing this long term, if I'm going to be in this game for 20, 30, 40, 50 years, whatever it may be, I want to seek out opportunities that are going to be most recession resistant uh, that can perform in a bad economy and in a good economy. I don't want to have to be shifting my strategies every several years when we have a recession, things like that. So what I decided on was value add, meaning we're fixing something up, uh, usually a five-year hold in uh, high growth areas where there's diversified employment. So you take like a Dallas-Fort Worth, for example, where I think the stat is like no one industry makes up 2% of the, the job market. So if, if like healthcare goes down, then the others are kind of lifting up, you know, the economy in that area. Uh, invest out in Florida a lot. So I'm always kind of looking from a macro level at migration trends, people moving from New York, New Jersey down to Florida, people moving from California into Texas, stuff like that. And, yeah, I mean, there's there's a multitude of, of criteria. It's different for everyone. But one thing that really stood out about Ashcroft, the reason I kept investing with them over and over as a LP and continue to do so, they have great transparency, they have great track record, and they did or they offer monthly distributions, which is important to me when it's my full-time income. Uh, I, I just prefer monthly versus quarterly, which is more of the standard. So, we're buying pre-existing product, 1980s, 1990s built, apartment communities, maybe 200 to 600 units, and we're all pooling our money together. I might put, let's say, $50,000 into one deal uh, and, and $25,000 in another and $75,000 in another. That, that's kind of how syndications work. It's a, a pooling of accredited investor capital to purchase large assets. Awesome. So, Travis, if somebody's listening to this and they want more information on uh, Ashcroft Capital or to connect, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and to learn more? Sure. Uh, AshcroftCapital.com is a great resource. You can check out the, the, the portfolio up there. You can reach out to me at uh, Travis at AshcroftCapital.com. Also, uh, I'm out there on, you know, Bigger Pockets, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, you can follow me at uh, Passive Investor Tips on Instagram. Be happy to connect with uh, anyone wanting to learn more about passive investing. Fantastic. Well, Travis, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about uh, your background and how you got into real estate and uh, also all the great work that you're doing over to help Ashcroft and uh, the benefits on passive investment. Great episode. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Money, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. I mean, love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on. And uh, Travis, thanks again for coming on the show. Thanks so much. Take care.